Hey there, fellow game developers. Before you hit that publish button on your next GDevelop game, let's talk about a few crucial steps you might be missing. Now, you've spent countless hours crafting your game, designing levels, but before you unleash it to the world, there's one last quest you must complete. Today, we'll dive into the ultimate pre-launch checklist to ensure your game shines. First up, let's talk about your game's splash screen. This is the very first thing your players will see, so you want to make a great impression. A well-designed splash screen can set the tone for your entire game. Think about your game's theme, style, and atmosphere. Use colors, logos, and animations that reflect what players can expect. And remember, simplicity can be powerful. Don't overcrowd it. With that design, you can set your splash screen in the project manager, heading into properties, and in the game properties, head into our branding and loading screen tab. So in here, you can set your splash screen, also called your loading screen. Next up, we have the project's name. Think of this as the game's first impression. You want to make it memorable and intriguing. A great name can spark curiosity and draw players in. Now I get it, sometimes it's hard to come up with a name. If you're stuck, try brainstorming with friends or using a name generator. Personally, I would recommend GeekLab. Sometimes the perfect name is just one creative session away. So once you get your name, you can head over to the project manager and in the game properties, you can set your game name right there. Next up, we have our game description. This is your chance to sell your game. Highlight the unique features, the storyline, and what makes your game stand out from the rest. Make it exciting and engaging. You can also set your game description in the project manager. And right below our game name, you can set your game description right here. Now let's talk about you. Don't forget to add your author information. You made the game, add your name in there. You can also set your author name in the project manager and right below the game description. Now you can also go ahead and add your publisher name. This will be used when packaging and submitting your application to the stores. Next, let's talk about visuals. Your game's icon and thumbnails are the first things players will see. Make them eye-catching and representative of your game. Trust me, you do not want your game icon looking like this or the thumbnail looking like this. So invest time into creating high-quality artwork. You can set your icon and thumbnail in the project manager and in the project manager you can click on icons and in here you can set your icons and thumbnail now let's talk about making profits you just finished your game and you need a way to make some money out of it that's where today's sponsor comes in packet sdk now packet sdk is the revolutionary sdk designed to help you earn more while delivering a seamless user experience Packet SDK collects publicly available information from the internet using the app user's IP address to download web pages from well-known websites. The data collected helps optimize the company's database while you, the developer, earn revenue seamlessly. Now, some of the key features of Packet SDK is it maximizes revenue, so Packet SDK supplements existing profit models acting as an alternative or addition to ads or subscription fees. It also funds advanced features so revenue earned can fund advanced app features or replace ads which should enhance the user experience. Now it is more profitable so you can enjoy higher earnings compared to traditional profit models like ads or subscriptions. Now how does Packet SDK work? Now Packet SDK operates seamlessly in the background while users interact with your app. It uses their device free resources and IP address to download public data. This ensures a smooth user experience without disruptions. The SDK is compatible with multiple platforms including Windows, Android, iOS, Linux, macOS, and Android TV. So it fits your needs regardless of the platform. Now some of the advantages for developers include the high incentives. So Packet SDK offers attractive high incentive policies with bonuses available in certain regions. It also has a quick integration so it only takes 20 minutes to integrate Packet SDK into your app without affecting its functionality. Functionality. It also has a proven effectiveness, so real-world cases have shown significant revenue increases while requiring only network permissions for integration. Now currently, Packet SDK is running a promotion where earnings in certain regions like the US, Australia, Hong Kong, South Korea, Japan can be boosted by 150%. So for reference, if you have 3,000 active users in the US, 
you can earn as high as 7,800 USD per year. So how do you get started? The first thing you need to do is head over to packetsdk.com, create an account and add your app information to obtain SDK program and app key. Now next, you need to hand over the SDK program to your technician for integration. Like I said earlier, this can be done in just 20 minutes. Next, install your app and start earning with revenue data displayed on your dashboard within 24 hours. Packet SDK recently launched a referral program so you can earn as high as 5% of the monthly earnings from the referred developers. You can learn about this by clicking the link in the description of this video. And don't miss out on this opportunity to take your app's revenue to the next level with Packet SDK. You can head over to packetsdk.com or click the link in the description of this video to learn more. Next, let's talk about tidying up your project. Over time, your game projects can accumulate a lot of unused resources like images, sounds, sometimes web JSON files. Keeping this can bloat your game's size and slow down performance. Here's how you can clean it up. Open the GDevelop Project Manager. Click on Resources. In here, you should see a list of all the assets you have in your project. Look for the resources that are not used in any scenes or events. Now, one thing GDevelop does is it makes it easy by highlighting unused resources. Select the unused resources and remove them. But wait, there's more. Simply removing them from GDevelop doesn't delete them from your project folder. To do that, you need to go into your project folder on your computer. Here, you manually delete unused resources, free up space, and keep your project clean. By removing these unused resources, you ensure your game is efficient and lightweight as possible. Plus, it helps you stay organized. Next, let's talk about sound and music. Loading your game's audio can significantly improve the player experience by reducing lag and ensuring seamless playback. In GDevelop, you can preload sounds and music by adding them to preload action at the beginning of the scene. This way, the game will load the audio in the background before it is needed, making sure it's ready to play instantly. To do this, navigate your project settings and enable preload for the sound or music file. Next, consider preloading some scenes. Preloading can help reduce loading times and create a seamless experience for your players. In GDevelop, you can preload scenes by using the preload a scene action. Add this action at the start of your game or between scenes to load the next scene in the background. Consider a custom mouse cursor as it can add a unique touch to your game and enhance the player experience. In GDevelop, you can set a custom mouse cursor by importing your cursor image install the extension cursor object. Now make sure your cursor fits the theme and the style of your game. Next, improving performance with trigger ones. The trigger ones condition in GDevelop is used to ensure that an event or action is only executed a single time when its condition are first met. This is particularly useful for preventing repetitive actions that should only occur once, such as showing a message, playing sound, or changing a scene. Finally, identify your game is a pixel game. This affects your design choices and how you handle scaling and resolution. If a game uses pixel art, ensure your assets are consistent in the style and the resolution. Don't forget to set the scale mode or the sampling in the game properties to nearest. Now you can also head into your resources and uncheck smooth the image. So this should keep your pixels sharp and avoid blurring. With these steps completed, your game is one step closer to being the next big hit. Remember, attention to detail can make all the difference.